Happy Friday to all my wonderful people out there. Welcome to another episode of Primetime Sports. I'm your host, Malik Brown. You know, it's that week college students love, but some might hate. It's homecoming week. We love it because it's that time to show our school spirit and be interactive with other people. But others seem not to like it because of the constant hassle of getting to class since there's so many things going on. For example, for example, like yesterday, I had to walk from the blue light to Langdale because they decided to have a golf cart parade when I needed to get to class. I'm kidding. I didn't have to walk that far. But I definitely would have used those golf carts to use. Speaking of golf, though, our men's team finished second at the Auto Trader Collegiate Classic, and our own Caleb Johnson was there. He brings us more. Competing against top teams in collegiate golf, the Georgia State men's team brought home a second-place finish off the strong performance from junior transfer Severin Sawyer. I played decent, I'd say, but there was a lot more out there. Either way, I'm T4 today. It's a great finish for me. I'm really happy with that. Georgia State rival Georgia Southern unfortunately came for revenge after the Panthers bounced the Eagles from the Sun Belt Tournament last spring. Georgia Southern walked away from the Auto Trader Classic with a 24-stroke win, and Southern Stephen Fisk shot a tournament record 19 under par on his way to a first-place individual finish. The Panthers will get their next swing at competition October 28th in Greensboro, but overall appeared content with their performance at the Auto Trader Classic. I think we can all improve. I mean, our rivals beat us by 23 shots or something like that, or 24. So I'm happy with our second finish and with myself and that the team did a good job. But I think um, we have a lot more. But um, it was a good start, I think, for me and the, the team. For Primetime Sports, I'm Caleb Johnson. Come on, baby. Thank you, Caleb. Georgia Tech and Georgia State's men's basketball teams will be partnering on Sunday to raise money to benefit the ongoing hurricane relief effort by playing an exhibition game. It's called the A-Town Showdown and will be held at the McCamish Pavilion starting at 12. Tickets for the general public are $20 and five for students. You probably already saw the basketball team last night at Georgia State's annual GSU Gym, which introduces both the men's and women's team for the upcoming season. I say it was a great night, and our reporter Brianna Dahlquist got a glimpse of it all. What's up, guys? This is Brianna Dahlquist with the GSU Jam. Our police department is actually having a scrimmage pretty soon. It's about to be lit. Stay tuned. Point showdown. Who's going to win? I'm wondering.
Bennett Williams is the champ. Let's talk to him a little bit later tonight. First and foremost, congratulations. You won the three-point comp competition. How do you feel right now? I feel great. I'm ready for the season to be here. All right. What was your most favorite memory from tonight, the GSU Jam? Probably Coach Hunter. You know, he always puts on an act. So him dancing that. Really now, cool. now, did you teach him? Like, what was that? The, the Dougie? What was no, that? That's all him. I ain't teach him none of that. No, but I didn't see you dancing. Why weren't you up there dancing? I didn't do none of that. <laughs> all right. Well, next time, right? I got you. Tonight's GSU Jam was a lituation from top to bottom. Lit, lit, lit. The crowd showed out today, and so did the men and women's basketball team. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I'm Brianna Dahlquist. Back to you, Malik. Thank you, Brianna. Hey, it looks like they had a good time. Too bad I couldn't go because I had class, but who cares? Anyway, it's that time, folks. Time to talk some football. And after you gave us that frog joke, I had to bring it back. Our football analyst, Just Do It. How you doing, man? I'm doing good, man. Yeah. How are you? Doing How you? great. Doing great. So this team is on a three-game winning streak. What has been working for them so far? Well, let's break it down. Let's, what's the common denominator? If we look at all three of these games on this win streak, they all have this in common. Penny Hart has 100 receiving yards, at least 100 receiving yards, at least eight catches, and at least one touchdown. So that's what's been working for them. They've been, I, I call this since two weeks ago, before they played Coastal Carolina, Connor Manning loves getting this guy the ball. Um, just last week, they knock off the top team in the Sun Belt. Connor Manning throws for 446 passing yards, and he also throws for three touchdowns. That 446 passing yards is his career high, most by any quarterback in the Sun Belt this season. Four of the, three of those four touchdowns go to none other than number 18, Penny Hart. So that's what's going good for them. They're looking like Drew Brees and Brandon Cooks out there on that field. So Georgia State's got to keep that up. Okay, that's I like that. I like that. So I heard from a little birdie. Uh, Troy is something serious. Please tell me, what are some of the things we should look out for? I'm not going to lie. This Troy team is very, very good. They're, they're not, Georgia State isn't the only team that's racking up a win streak. Uh, I, know they last, I know they lost their last game, but before that, they've been on a four-game win streak, and that includes the almighty LSU Tigers. Now, I give, I give them the benefit of the doubt. Um, the LSU's offense did not come to play at all. Their defense played well, but they were just on the field way too long. It's kind of like you playing spades. You know, you got Joker, Joker, Deuce, Deuce, right. a couple face cards, okay. but your, but your uh, partner doesn't have anything. Right. So, so it's like it, it was one of those type of games. But this is a very tough, a very disciplined team. They run the right. ball very well. So even when they're not, even when they're passing the ball good, they could be passing the ball for a couple right. hundred yards, right. a few touchdowns. Okay. They still lose when that running game doesn't get going. So that seems to be their bread and butter. Okay. So Georgia State is going to have to look out for that. All right, we got to look out for that. All right, so definitely. All right, so – I'm pretty sure I know the answer to this already, but I'm going to ask anyway. Um, who has to have a big game for us this week? Well, I'll put it like this. When, flip I mean, when, when the touchscreen phones first came out, mm -hmm. my father still had this old flip phone, this little purple flip phone. Okay. It's old and ugly. I used to tell him all the time, like, Pop, why don't you just upgrade? You know, they got these touchscreen phones, this new technology upgrade. He used to say, boy, if it ain't broke, if it ain't broke don't fix it. <laughs> so I'm, I'm going to go with Penny Hart. Okay. You know, he's, he's been playing amazing football. Last, last game, the first possession of the game, Connor Manning hits him for a 50-yarder. One head Odell Beckham catch. Okay. So if they if they want to win this game, get this guy the ball early and often. Get him the ball. Get him the ball. Now, when it comes down to it, who's going to win the game? Who do you think is going to win? How can I not go with Georgia State? I've been on a win streak. They've been on a win streak. <laughs> I've picked them three weeks in a row. So I, I'm going to stick with Georgia State. It's homecoming. I think they're excited about it. I think the home crowd should be a factor. So I, I'm, I'm going to roll with Georgia State. All right. Okay. Well, you heard it here. Thank you, Justin. Thank you so much. Make sure to come out to the game tomorrow. I mean, why wouldn't you? It's the homecoming game, right? It's the homecoming game. It's homecoming. Come I'll be now. there. All I'll right. be there. All right. Now, not only did I bring him up here and toss the football today, but uh, I brought him here so he can be prepared to become the new anchor next week. Okay. So,
Justin, go ahead. Well, the volleyball team has new players and a new schedule. Instead of playing just one fall game, they'll be playing four. Reporter Chip Matthews brings us more. Due to the continued growth of collegiate beach volleyball, NCAA legislature made changes increasing the number of fall competition dates. In the past, the Lady Panthers beach volleyball team would only have played once in the fall and not again until the spring. Now they have four opportunities to take to the sand. Head coach Beth Van Fleet knows this change will have a great impact on her team. One of the hardest things for athletes coming in is they are used to competing so often and then they come into school uh, for the first semester and all of a sudden it's just practice, practice, practice. And while we have a lot of fun practicing and we love the process, we are all competitors at heart. So it's really great to go see some new faces across the net. The change in the fall schedule could not have come at a better time. With five freshmen and three graduate students joining the squad, the Lady Panthers welcome any and every opportunity to gauge their team against the competition. This is a great advantage for all of the teams who are really building and trying to learn new teammates for this fall semester. Now the Panthers have already competed twice, most recently on the 14th in South Carolina, where they played against the Gamecocks and the University of North Carolina Wilmington. They play in a total of 27 matches, winning nine, splitting eight, and losing eight. There are another two dates scheduled, one on the 28th at Gulf Shores and another on the 4th of next month in Emerson, Georgia. Information on their opponents is currently unavailable, but you can count on us to bring you all the latest. For Primetime Sports, I'm Chip Matthews. Thank you, Chip, and thank you all for watching this week's show. I had a great time on set, but I promise you, this will not be your last time seeing me. If you want to keep up with our content, like and subscribe to us on YouTube and follow us on Twitter at Prime Source with a Z. Until we meet again, I'm Malik Brown. Have a blessed week.